Hey guys, welcome to the Scholar Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning. In this channel, I make a lot of videos on how to create your own website, how to create your own e-commerce or WooCommerce website and start making money online by selling products online. If you're new to this channel, please remember to hit the subscribe button. You can find it at the bottom of the video and just hit subscribe. Please like this video if you like my content and remember to leave me a comment below. Talk to me, let me know what you like about the videos, what you don't like about the videos, what I can do to improve on these videos. And if you're new to the channel as well, um, if you go to the description, there is video timestamps available for you. If you want to jump ahead to certain sections of the video, if you don't want to watch the entire video, please feel free to utilize those video timestamps and follow us on our social media channels. We've got a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram page, and let's start learning. In this video, we're going to look through uh, dropshipping math to help you figure out how much money can you expect to make from a dropshipping store and how you can do those calculations before you start your dropshipping business so you have an idea of how much money you're going to make. A lot of people think, oh, I love handbags. Let me create a dropshipping store that sells handbags. Then they go find a designer who charges them 20 grand to build a handbag uh, dropshipping or e-commerce store. And then they sit there for a year or two years and they don't sell any handbags. And then they ask themselves, why am I not selling any handbags? Why am I making money? Then they give up and they say, no, dropshipping doesn't work. But um, they fail to understand the math and how dropshipping works the first time. So I'm going to take you through the mathematics and how you can... Have a better calculated guess of how much money you're going to make in your dropshipping stores. And um, I'm going to start with um, dropshipping mats for a handbag. Okay, so let's assume you want to sell handbags in your store and you could either make these handbags yourself, manufacture them yourself, or you could dropship them from places like AliExpress. Whether you're getting buying them yourself or dropshipping, it will be the same principle that applies. So over here, I've created a little spreadsheet to help us along to figure out dropshipping mathematics. Okay, The first thing you want to do when you are selling anything on an e-commerce store is to figure out how much does it is it going to cost you to advertise this. This is the most important variable that is going to determine the success or the failure of your e-commerce business is this number right here. Okay, cost per click or something that's called CPC um, or cost per conversion. You know, there's many variables. I mean, there's many ways this number is sort of is thrown around. But basically, it is a cost of advertising. And of course, there is a difference between a cost per click or a cost per conversion. But the easiest way for me to explain this concept to you is to use the cost per click, um, you know, um, number. Okay, and this is how you determine a cost per click number for an advert. So cost per click is the amount of money you have to pay Google or any advertising uh, platform. The amount of money you have to pay them for one person to click on your advert. Google charges you only for clicks. They don't charge you for showing your adverts to people. If nobody clicks on your advert, they're not going to charge you. But if somebody clicks on your advert, they're going to charge you the cost per click amount. Now, um, if you look at handbags, the best way to determine what is the cost per click value for an, a, 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 um, an item is to search for it on a keyword planner. And the keyword planner, the way you find the keyword planner is just google keyword planner on uh normal google and then you'll come up to this website where it says go to keyword planner and then just click there and make sure that you have your google ads account connected because you cannot access the keyword planner if you don't have a google ad account but once you have one this is what the keyword planner looks like when you reach the keyword planner you're going to enter at the top there the main keywords that you want to uh, search for. So in this specific case, it's ladies' bags, handbags. Just find a couple of variations of what exactly you're searching for. So I'm just going to make this simple and say um, uh, ladies' bags or handbags. Once you've done that and you've clicked on the search, it will show you um, at the bottom there 
the average monthly searches, the competition, and it will show you the top of page, I mean, top of page bid and top of um, the low range and the high range. So these are the numbers you want to look for. This is the numbers you have to pay Google to be on top of the page for this keyword. So, um, and you can find variations of this keyword, ladies bag, handbags, and the keyword, remember, is what you will use inside your, your SEO when you're building your page, you will use that keyword. So you have to select the keyword first and find a keyword that's got a pretty decent average monthly search. So you want this monthly search to be high, but you want the price to be low. So our monthly search is between, is like 8,000. So let's go to handbags and say we've selected this keyword handbags, right? Handbags has got... 8,100 monthly search. This is pretty decent. That means there's a lot of people searching for handbags on Google that maybe are looking to buy handbags or for whatever reason they are searching for handbags. And the competition is very, very high on this. And then the competition has been growing lately. So you also want to look at the trend. I mean, I mean, not the competition, the, the monthly searches have been going up. So when you look at the search, it tells you more and more people are searching for handbags. So this is more likely a good market to go into uh, selling handbags if more and more people are searching for it this number 8100 is increasing and increasing but the competition is high so this means there's many more other companies that are paying google for the same um uh, keyword so they so you're gonna you're competing with other online sellers let me show you if you look at um, um google, the google search for uh, ladies bags um or handbags whatever these these are your competition take a lot is your competition equilibrium is your competition iconics shop mango new chick these are all the companies that are using that keyword which means when you go into this business you're going to be competing with them and these people are paying google between two rand and 26 rands per click two rand and six rands per click for handbags they're paying between two and six rands so actually if you were faced with these two keywords you would pick handbags because even though it also has high competition. It has a, eight times the number of monthly volume searches. So there's more people <laughs> searching for it. So even though with a high competition, you're more likely to get a click in there because there's definitely more searches to go around that Google is going to have to split between all of you. And the second thing is if you look at the top and the low bid range, you're going from two rand to six rands, which means even the highest person, the most expensive person, like the top of range means the, the biggest bid for this keyword is paying Google only six rand. So you can definitely work with six rand as your top budget, which means if you pay Google six rand for that keyword, you are guaranteed to be on top of the bid range. But you must also be careful if you had the six versus this two um, for similar keywords, it perhaps means that people that go for ladies' bags are more likely to purchase a bag than people that search for handbags. So there's a reason why the, the top of bid range is also a bit lower. So, so, so you could choose this keyword because, oh, it's cheaper. But just be careful. Cheaper doesn't always mean you're going to make more sales. Cheaper just means there's more people searching for that keyword. But the fact that people are not willing to pay a lot of money for to be at the top of the page for that keyword most likely means that most people that search for handbags are not looking to buy. Maybe they're searching for handbags and they're just like wanting to comp to look at designs or blogs or whatever you know so there's a reason all there's a method to the madness but the key is you want to find a perfect optimal pricing versus searches and competition but the most important variable you want to look at here is definitely the monthly searches how many people are searching for this and the competition so you want high search low competition so every time you see high competition that's not good it's not a good signal when you want to when you're researching a new product to create an e-commerce store you don't want to go into a, the, a business where the competition is high this is already a bad a bad signal but if you are really into bags and you're really making this bags and you gotta go into this then you must make sure that therefore you definitely you're, you're gonna have to be the competition on the top of page range uh, i mean top of page uh a range so let's uh, let's take the 654 and work with this number right and say okay fine the cost per click for handbags is 654 the conversion um, the normal conversion for uh, most uh, e-commerce stores, they'll tell you, is between two, two, between two and three percent. In South Africa, it's actually a bit lower. This is a global number because globally, 
people are more free shopping online people you know like if you go to the united states i think that's where the the numbers is between two and three percent here in south africa or in africa in general uh, people are still very wary with shopping online. They were very wary of scams. So this number is much, much lower. It's between 1% even lower. You get 1% of people visiting your website without making a purchase. Some of them will visit your website 10 times before they make a purchase. They want to see your website is still there. They want to call you on the phone. They want, you know, to see that you're a real site. They're really a bit, they're still a bit, you know. So in South Africa, this number is much lower than 2%. Definitely, I've, I've I've tested this on many many stores. You're gonna get you're gonna need to get many more visitors before you make a sale. But we're gonna work with two percent because it is a generally accepted industry standard. Um, but you must just be aware that um, it's not two percent in South Africa. So if we continue with these maths, with our numbers, we are going to assume that we are going to spend on a good ad hundred rands per day. Right. We're going to spend a hundred rand on this um, advertising of ours. So for hundred rands a day and this cost per click, you're going to get 16 people visiting your website per day. If 16 people visit your website per day um, with a conversion rate of 2%, you're going to make approximately two sales per week between two to three. All right. We're going to work with two because we are on the conservative side. So let's say we are making two sales per week. Now let's go back to our handbags and look at the typical pricing. You can see a lot of it is typically around 500 Rand a bag for something. So obviously you're not going to create a store and start selling your bags for 10 grand like this one. There must be, it must be a special bag, but typically for 500 Rand is a good price for a bag. So, um, in the week, if we sell two bags, we're going to make a thousand rands in a week, but we have to pay for that advert. And that advert, because it was 100 rands a day, we need to pay Google 700 rands for that advert. And after we pay Google for that advert, we're going to need to pay for the material. Uh, or let's say the, 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 the cost of actually creating the bag. And um, there's many more costs involved. And I'm just going to summarize all of them. You have to, the cost for your hosting and all these other things. But let's just assume everything else is free. You had a WooCommerce store and you're not on Shopify. Um, and if you're on WooCommerce, you're paying 300 rands. Um, because let's say you're drop shipping and, um, you've multiplied your price by three, you know, you got your bag for, let's say hundred rand and you multiply it by like three, 150 and you multiply it by three and it's like, you're selling it for 500. So you made like three times 300% the, the profit. So it actually cost you 300 rands, even though you sold it for a thousand rands. Um, and if you look at that, you're not making a profit basically. I mean, I've overly simplified this maths. But this is the basic um, thinking that you need to get into before you go into drop shipping, right? This cost per click is the most important variable. This cost per click, to be honest, you want to get it below, even below 50 cent. You want it to be something like um, 0. Um, 0.4. 0.2 you want a really low cost per click the lower this cost per click the higher your profits is going to be because if you get it at 0.2 your conversion still remains at two percent all right so then let's calculate how many visitors we're getting with a cost per click of 0.2 percent so you're going to take your 100 rand and you're going to divide it by Point two. This is 500 visitors per day. And out of 500 visitors per day, um, we are making uh, five sales. No, 500 visitors per day. We're making, um, we're making 10 sales a day. All right. So uh, per 100 is two. And then two times five is 10. And um, the weekly revenue, we don't know because we don't know what we're selling. Right. But if you're going to make 10 sales per week, and you can keep the average sale of your product to um, even to, to this, you know, to this, um, you know, let's say like everything average between, let's say even 300 grand. Um, and then it will be 300 grand times, um, you know, you've made uh, 10 sales. Okay. That's 3000 rand per week in sales. All right. You're still paying Google 700 rand for the advert. 
and the material cost is going to be out of the 3,000 rand, maybe a thousand rand, right? So still, let's work with the same ratios. So it's going to be a thousand rand, right? And then um, if you get it there, then the profit is now 3,000 rand, right? Minus a thousand rand, which is 2,000 rand, all right? Minus 700 rand, and you're looking at 1,300 rand profit, right? 1,300 rand profit. That's decent. That's a, that's a kind of store that is going to be. And I, I know stores like this. I'm talking about numbers I know of. There are items you can find that you can sell for this amount of price. And your cost per click is sitting at about 0.2. And um, you are getting 500 visitors a week and making this amount of sales. And you're making 1,300 rands a week. This is a kind of, this question mark is a kind of research that you need to go into when you are um, going um, online, when you're trying to uh, figure out what to sell online, when you're trying to come up with an e-commerce business, these are the numbers that you need to get right. You need this to be as low as possible, keeping this weekly revenue just right, finding the right pro the product that you can sell at a good price. So it doesn't help if you get the cost per click down and then you end up selling you know, pins, which are going for 10 rand each. And then you still have to, if you're selling 10 pens for 10 rand, you're not going to make enough revenue to make up for this. So your revenue needs to be sitting somewhere between a hundred, not even a hundred, between 200 and 500, 200 minimum. So let's look at the minimum number where your revenue, if this is your cost per click, right? And we keep this the same at 0.2 and we keep this the same at 2%, right? And we keep this, this we're getting 500 visitors, right? We need to figure out what is the minimum uh, price, sort of what is the minimum item price that you need to be selling for, for you to be profitable. If we work backwards, so we're going to work backwards to determine how cheap or how, so that what kind of product you need to be selling in terms of what is the price of what you need to be selling for you to just break even, right? If you are, if you manage to get the right cost per click, if you manage to get the right cost per click, um, and you want to make a profit of, um, let's go to a profit of zero. Let's assume we are on the same break even point there. Um, um, and, and you want to make a profit of zero. Your cost for the ad is 700 rand, right? And this will be 300 rand, right? So you're making a thousand rand, all right? Uh, weekly revenue. If you take this a thousand rand and you divide this by ten, that's a hundred rand. Okay, a hundred rand is the minimum average price you need to be selling items in your store for, for you to break even. So these numbers actually work out really nice. A thousand rand. I'm going to just highlight this. Let's go to um, the cell and um, give this a fill of green. All right and give this a fill of green as well. Because we have just found, you know, with the numbers simplified as much as possible, we have just found that sort of the limit or that you need to be looking at. With the cheapest cost per click of 0.2, you need to be at least selling your item for 100 rands each. So whatever you're selling here, this question mark, whatever it is, whatever you're selling here, if you can find the right cost per click, you must be selling it something for at least 100 rand. If you know you're selling handbags for sure, your cost per click cannot be more than 6.54 for a price of 100 rand. So there are variables, but take the time to research the products, figure out what the cost per click is, come to Google keyword and get that number, those numbers down, figure what this number out what this number is, and then get how much you're going to sell it for and work out your profit. Spend the time to do the research before you start to think about even going into e-commerce business.